What's going on everybody? It's your boy Shuggy from Shook Earth Media and today we're talking about the original ending for The Walking Dead. We just had the series finale on Sunday. I've had some time to think about it. We're going to have some additional thoughts about the finale, kind of a re-review towards the end of the video. But the first part of the video is that Greg Nicotero and Angela Kang have revealed the original scene that was intended to end the series. It was different than the Rick and Michonne stuff. At the point when they were filming the uh, series finale, they had not yet decided for sure that the movies were off and that the show was on the table. They hadn't made that decision yet, so it, it didn't get shot until summer. It was apparently uh, the series finale was filmed in March, and this little teaser trailer kind of for the next uh, Rick and Michonne TV show that was apparently shot in the summer. So uh, I find that very interesting, but let's find out what the original ending in fact was. So apparently there was another time jump after the first time jump. We had, of course, a year later, we saw the memorial, we saw, you know, e Ezekiel running for governor, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the, the, apparently Greg Nicotero, who directed the finale and uh, is the executive producer on the show for, since the beginning, he, uh, they shot a scene and ended up cutting it. So they had an original scene planned, something in place, and it was apparently another flash forward. After Dale rode off, we cut forward to the Freedom Parkway outside Atlanta. And they have the picture right here. Thankfully, we got the uh, legendary poster for The Walking Dead of Rick Grimes riding into town on the horse. This was a classic image from the pilot episode of the show and apparently they wanted to bring it full circle because a lot of this uh, episode was about bringing things full circle i mean we have fa father gabriel after being introduced locking everyone out of uh, his church he comes full circle and he is the one who unlocks the gate to let people in you know there's another full circle little cameo with daryl riding off into the sunset, there's actually a zombie that he passes, played by the director Greg Nicotero. And that's because the first zombie that Daryl encounters on the TV show was also portrayed by Greg Nicotero. So there's other examples as well as of things coming full circle, but they really wanted to emphasize that aspect. Uh, so, uh, the, so we see an ethanol modified van, so a bigger van with the, that's more of a gas guzzler, I'm guessing. Or modified how? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe they uh, modify it so they can use different types of fuel. I don't know. With a young mo woman and man in the front seats in their 20s. And through the scene, we come to realize it's adult RJ and Judith. They were originally planning to fast forward, I guess that would be almost 10 years. Uh, so that's a huge time jump. And that implies that there's whatever's going on with Rick and the CRM and Rick and Michonne and all of that. They didn't come back seemingly, or maybe they did. And now they're off find and the, the kids are on their own for some reason. Something happened. I find that really perplexing. The fact that Rick has been gone for so long and, and then they wanted to do a time jump where he's gone even longer. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. Uh, so other adult versions of the kids are in the back, Coco and Gracie. So, it would have been recasting everybody. That's the other thing that's surprising about the scene is they would have locked in all of the adult versions of RJ and Judith. One of the benefits of having a bunch of kids on the show is that if you want to do a spinoff with them later, you don't have to use the same actors. You know, you could cast somebody completely new uh, just for logistical reasons or, you know, maybe they, they don't want to act anymore. Who knows what's going to happen with these kids, right? So uh, that's one of the advantages. But w with this ending scene, if they had done it, it would have been a little bit harder to recast after that. Of course, they still could, but it, w it seems less likely, right? So um, that's a bit of a risk on uh, AMC's part to do something like that. So they're out here looking to escort any survivors back to their communities. So it sounds like they're kind of doing uh, the Aaron thing. Um, the, uh, which, of course, Aaron was f found our group and was trying to get them to integrate into, the, um, you know, Alexandria and all of that. Um, so continuing the legacy of their parents, of course, as RJ speaks out of the radio, he finishes with, if you can hear me, answer back. This is Rick Grimes, which, of course, is his name. 
and the line Rick said in the pilot. So again, bringing another thing full circle. It's a very film school thing to do to have a cap scene that basically just is a shout out to a, a, one of the first scenes. They did a similar ending in Lost. You know, the, fr the first shot of Lost is a man, a close up on a man's face as he opens his eyes and wakes up on the island. And the last shot of Lost, spoiler alert, is the exact opposite. It's starting from a far away shot. It closes in on a man as he closes his eyes. That's a very film school thing. It's a very common thing, full circle. Uh, sometimes it gets a little overdone, but, you know, in general, it, it does work. Callbacks, these are uh, things that the audiences like to see. So uh, it, it's an interesting ending. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure why uh, they decided to end it that way, whether that was supposed to be a preview for the movies or whether or not they were trying to hype up a potential spinoff with the kids. But the fact that they fast-forwarded that much is shocking to me, and the fact that they didn't, um, just incorporate that concept into the time jump that we already had. Also interesting. Like, why, if we're going to flash that far forward, why not flash the Commonwealth 10 years forward and see where that goes? You know, do like the comic book where we had a, a bit more of a before and after, where the after was a bit more interesting and we had a, a bit more stuff there, a little bit more meaty stuff. But I just thought that was interesting. And, um, you know, he, he, this is them, the article where they describe how uh, the actual ending came to be and the fact that, you know, they, they didn't know that they were doing a TV show yet and they thought it was still a movie trilogy. Um, so that, that's something that I thought was really interesting. It's always interesting to hear stories of how it all comes together. Um, but I just wanted to uh, take the time here to do like one kind of final last review of the finale because I've had some time to think about it now and I have some more thoughts on it. So we got the uh, final scene pulled up on the screen here. And, um, you know, of course, this scene was very satisfying to see and I loved it. Um, but thinking back on the finale after a couple days, it it's becomes a lot more obvious how much they managed to cram into this uh, final episode here. I, I feel like the, it, it was definitely rushed. Even though it's a long season, it felt like some of the moments that could have been great really were just kind of there and gone. Um, I, I think it was right to emphasize Rosita death and the emotions there and get some of the epilogue stuff. But the, again, all every moment in the episode to me like could have been better if we had more time dedicated to it. You know, the, the, at the beginning with uh, the Daryl coming into the hospital. I mean, we were fading in and out. That scene was so quick. I didn't mention it in my review, but, you know, we had a girl who was just shot, you know, fighting zombies and stuff. Realism kind of gets to me there. The fact that Daryl got away from the Commonwealth soldiers and didn't get killed. Uh, the, they, they would just leave him there. Oh, we, we're chasing him into this building. We're going to knock him out and then leave. Why would they do that? <laughs> why would they even, if they're not going to kill him or kidnap him, why would they even bother coming in the building? Just a qu some questions that I have. Uh, and, and then, you know, the, 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 I like the fact that they had a plan when it comes to the variant walkers and how to deal with the horde. But again, I, as I mentioned in the review, that part felt undercooked. It was very quick. The final confrontation with Pamela, of course, we've been building that up for a while. But the whole um, epic speech in the comic of We Ain't the Walking Dead, that was uh, a little rushed too and felt like an afterthought for that reason. So um, I, I got to say that there's some qualms I have about it in retrospect. At the day of, the emotions were high. The fact that it was the ending, it really felt uh, like a big climactic thing. Uh, but, you know, of course, looking back on it, I, I almost wish that you know, the, the final episode was its own epilogue. You know, somebody in my chat when I did my live stream mentioned that they should have done a whole episode about the what happens after. And I think that that's right. You know, we wrap up the Pamela storyline before, you know, trim some of the fat, cut out some of the um, unnecessary storylines and really focus on some of these key moments. I think it could have been a little bit better. Uh, but... You know, and of course, I wanted more action. I wanted more death. I wanted all that all this season. So um, I, I will say that the finale was, it was competent. It was 
Uh, part three of this final season elevated the rest of the season. I didn't care for part one. and uh, The Reaper storyline, terrible. Part two was slightly better. Um, but part three, I think, was about as good as the show has been since season eight. Um, you know, there's been dips and, and all that. Overall in quality, of course, the show is not the same as its peak. It's It never was um, as good as, like, season six, post-season six. But there's, of course, great things in there, and I'm not going to hate on it too much. But I got to say that um, this finale, the longer I get away from it, the more I think about what could have been, you know, as much as I did enjoy the episode, I stand by my positive review. I gave it a seven out of 10 on that live stream and I stand by that score. I think seven out of 10 is about as good as the, the walking dead has been, uh, this final season. So I think that it, the finale ended up not, maybe not being the best episode of part three, which I think is interesting. Um, but I wanted to take a look at this final scene for a second um, we got uh, the, this is the callback weapon from World Beyond, which is a weapon that I enjoy. It pulverizes zombies. I think it's really cool. Of course, I love the costumes and uh, seeing Rick again is great. Although I, I honestly, I, I think Michonne's costume is a little over the top. Like it looks like custom, really delicate work. You know, it doesn't look like apocalypse wear to me. Um, so that was a little bit jarring to see that and her the CGI of her walking into the horde of course wasn't the greatest um, But I'm really curious why Rick was smiling You know, there's got to be somebody else in the helicopter besides the voice because obviously he recognized the voice right away But something in the helicopter when it lowers to his eye level that he can see in he's smiling about it So I don't know what that means and any theories, this is kind of the mystery box thing that they have. You know, I, I'm thinking there's, it, it feels bigger than it is, I think. Um, it might not end up being too much of anything. Uh, but they, they tried to do a little origin story for the, uh, the, the phone and stuff that Michonne found. And, you know, it, it played well on the first viewing. But thinking back on it, you know, Michonne found those items below deck right? She uh, was not, she did not find it above deck. So it's a bit confusing how the the bag that he threw on top of the ship ended up below deck. Um, I don't know if maybe it just jostled down there over time, but it really seemed like it was placed there specifically in the spot where Michonne found it. So uh, I don't know. It's hard to buy that. Um, I, I, I gotta, I gotta point that out. And, um, you know, looking at the scene again, playing it back, you know, we got Michonne writing a letter to Judith. We got Rick uh, writing a letter just basically to everybody he ever knew, kind of collectivized as one person and everything he learned. I like that he said, you know, the people that I survived with mattered. I learned more from them than I did post, uh, you know, the, the, the people that I knew made me who I am. And that, that to me shows he's not a significantly different person now with the CRM and everything. So I think that that's a, an interesting setup, an interesting dynamic. Um, and you see the phone here, of course, you know, with the little drawing on it. Still curious about who drew that because as far as I know, Rick does not have any pictures of Michonne or Carl uh, or no, not Carl or Judith, of course. Uh, I don't think he has pictures of them, so and I don't think he's an artist, so he didn't draw that himself. Uh, but maybe he described what they look like to somebody else. Uh, so I'm I'm a bit confused about I'm still confused about the phone all this time later. Um, you know I understand why he carried with them, you know, just to have a, a photo of people he cares about. Um, you know I get all that, but even after he sees the helicopter lowering, he throws the bag on top of the ship i guess he doesn't want them to find it but it looks like he just has supplies and shoes and if that was me if i knew i was going back to crm i would have taken that stuff with me so i don't know i the like i said the more time that passes the more holes i poke in it i still enjoyed the episode still giving it a positive review still happy with the ending overall i think they they held up the legacy of walking dead they almost ruined it <laughs> earlier in the final season i think they saved it with part three and uh you know i'm, I'm 
looking forward to whatever comes out in the future but this has uh, been an interesting little hodgepodge video i wonder what you guys have to say about it have your thoughts about the finale changed since you watched it and uh what do you think about the original ending that was revealed by greg nicotero and angela kang i think that's pretty interesting little tidbit there i'm glad we got some information i would love to see that ending i wonder if they're ever going to release it probably not because they don't want to log in the casting if they don't have to. <laughs> That's my guess. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Definitely hit the sub button if you want to see more Walking Dead content. Of course, you know, it's going to be wrapping up uh, a, a little bit for a while until uh, uh, Dead City or Fear, whichever one comes first. But uh, we do have a game coming out, Saints and Sinners 2 coming out, I think, soon. So I'll, I'll be reviewing that when I can get my hands on that. And, uh, you know, any news that comes out in the meantime, we will take a look at. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. There is a trailer for Dead City out, but it's so short. I don't really think there's a lot to break down. So I don't think I'm going to make a video about that. But if you guys have any other requests for videos that I should make, definitely leave them as well. And with that, I've rambled long enough. It's been your boy, Shogi. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace out.